Before we get into the main topic of today's video, I just want to gush about Dan for a little bit. I love this character, especially what they've done with him in more recent installments. Dan is one of the newer characters added to Street Fighter V, being the first character added in Season 5. I think it's hard to deny that while he's not very powerful, Dan is one of the most fun and likeable characters in the game. I'm not a Dan player, but I can't resist playing him from time to time. Dan also recently received what I think is one of the coolest nerfs I've ever seen, Red Fireball. I love this because it's only a nerf in the context of his infinite. Outside of that, it's just a fun new tool. Dan in Omega Street Fighter 4 is super interesting. For a start, he's not just decent or better than you'd expect, he's genuinely a fantastic character. One of the best in the game. And he has a command grab, because why not? If this ever showed up in SF5, I would lose my shit. I absolutely love this. A big part of why Dan is such a good character in Omega is because of Fun Jinken. It's an invincible, meterless launcher, and a parody of Tekken's Electric Wind God Fist. By inputting a Shaw Yukon and hitting Punch and Down Forward on the same frame, you can activate this move. This gives Dan amazing meterless damage. Dan got a ton of other amazing stuff in Omega, such as much faster normals, the ability to cancel his forward dash into normals, a new special move in Dan Retsu Ken, which returned in Street Fighter V, Air EX Dan Kicks being made into a dive kick, and Ground EX Dan Kicks having much better juggle potential. Ultra Dan is in a similar boat to Street Fighter V Dan. He's not a very powerful character, but he's still very lovable. However, he is balanced quite differently from Street Fighter V Dan, and while I much prefer Dan in Street Fighter V, it's still interesting nonetheless. Street Fighter V Dan is a very fundamental, but slightly underpowered character. Ultra Dan is a very mediocre character who happens to have one of the best moves in the game. Dan Kicks. The general idea with Ultra Dan is that the stuff that's similar to Ken and Ryu is pretty mediocre. But the few things he has unique to him are incredibly good. This is a little nod to the idea that Dan's fighting style, Saikyo, is actually one of the most powerful in the entire canon, but he doesn't realize it, so he unintentionally holds back his own fighting style by trying to copy Ken and Ryu. So, Dan's had it pretty good lately, but there's no denying he had some very humble beginnings. In earlier games, he was complete trash, and in the earliest version of Street Fighter 4, he wasn't much different. One small thing that I want to get out the way before I start talking about what made Vanilla Dan such a bad character. In my Omega Yugo video, I got Omega Yugo and Ultra Yugo mixed up a lot. For this video, Dan in his default costume will always be Vanilla Dan. The one in the training mode costume will mostly be Ultra, but I might switch to other versions depending on what I need to show. Okay, so Vanilla Dan. For a start, there are a few things he does have going for him. He actually has one thing that he does better than Ultra Dan, and that's that he has 1000 stun instead of 900. This might seem strange, but I think it's more for lore reasons. Characters who are kind of silly, goofy, or cocky tend to have less stun than their physique might suggest, such as Abigail, Birdie, and Rufus. I think the idea behind it is that characters like this think they're better than they actually are, and because of that, they kind of crumble under pressure. So yeah, makes sense for Dan. His Dan Kicks seem to be intact. Light Dan Kicks is still at worst, zero on block, and it has a ton of active frames, so it's very easy to make plus. Overall, still a great move. EX Dan Kicks are still a great tool, being his best combo ender and being only minus three on block. The only differences I could find with Dan Kicks are that Medium Dan Kicks do 50 on both hits instead of 60 then 40 like Ultra. And that Heavy Dan Kicks actually did more damage. 20 more than Ultra. So even back in vanilla, it seems like they had the idea of Dan Kicks being his best feature. However, his stuff that's normally mediocre in Ultra is downright terrible in vanilla, so let's get into that. 
This is hard to convey visually, so I'll explain it the best I can. Dan's Gadoukens are subtly worse than vanilla. The main reason why is that Vanilla Dan's Hurt Box extends all the way to the end of his hand, while when Ultra Dan performs a Gadouken, the Hurt Box only extends to his wrist. Koryuken is mostly the same, however, he gets less reward off it as an anti air. It's the same story with FADC. Dan doesn't get much off FADC at all in Vanilla. Vanilla Dan's main uses of FADC are to keep his sure you can save, squeezing out tiny extra bits of damage when you really need to end a round, and comboing after spaced Gadoukens. Ultra Dan gets significantly more off FADC. For a start, you can get a neutral jump heavy punch after a sure you can. It's kind of inconsistent out of the corner, but it's still kind of neat. Also, while I mentioned that Dan Kicks have been mostly unchanged, that's not entirely true for the air versions. EX Dan Kicks in the air has juggle potential. This was added in Arcade Edition, and gives Dan a nice 3 bar ender. There are two other FADC combos that are incredibly useful for Dan, that Vanilla Dan just can't do, both of them involving his Ultras. The first is Sure You Can into Ultra 2. This is very easy to do and does fantastic damage. Vanilla Dan can't do this because he doesn't have an Ultra 2. He's stuck with Ultra 1. To combo into Ultra 1, Ultra Dan can do EX Fireball, FADC, Ultra 1. This costs 3 bars, but it's worth the damage. It also fits in the dynamic that a lot of Ultras in Street Fighter 4 have with one Ultra being easier to land, but weaker, and another Ultra being harder to land, but significantly stronger. One thing I find really cute about Ultra 2 is that it returned in Street Fighter 5, which takes place after Street Fighter 4, as his V-Trigger 1, and he doesn't fall over anymore. In fact, instead of launching Dan backwards, when you charge it, it knocks your opponent backwards. I love seeing Dan become a subtly stronger character, it's so cute. So if he has no FADC into it, how does Dan land Ultra? Well, there's the universal option of Focus. It works as a mediocre fireball punish. And there's one more really funny way he can combo into it, which I'll get into now. One of Dan's most iconic moves is his legendary taunt. But what's interesting is you can cancel any frame of this to ultra. Combine this with a move that can super cancel, and I think you'll have figured out where this is going. As funny as this is, you're paying 4 bars to do something that a lot of characters pay 2 to do. I've seen people refer to this as the Psycho Crusher, but personally, I prefer to call it the FADC. Which stands for the fucking awful Dan Cancel. Speaking of taunts, in vanilla, Dan's taunts had no hitboxes. This is disgusting, I can't even believe this got past testing. This means that Dan loses one of the greatest FADC combos of all time. This is a great way to spend 2 bars to ruin someone's day. While I'm playing Ultra Dan again, let's talk about some of his normals and how they were significantly worse in vanilla. While I talked earlier about Dan's normals being bad, he does have some genuinely great ones. Plus Light Kick is plus 6 on hit, plus 3 on block. It's a 2 frame link into Crouching Medium Punch. Back Heavy Kick is plus 6 on hit and has very low pushback. It's a 1 frame link into standing medium kick. It's worth noting that up until Ultra, this was his close heavy kick, not his back heavy kick. 
It's also close heavy kick for Omega Dan. I'm pretty sure that Omega and Ultra were met by different teams, so this makes sense. This is also why Red Focus isn't in Omega mode. Also, while it makes a decent anti-air in all iterations, you can only juggle off the move in Omega mode. Close Medium Punch is plus 8 on hit, giving you a link into Crouch Medium Kick. So, how were these normals on Vanilla, Dan? As you can see, nowhere near as good. Close Heavy Kick was nowhere near as good as it is now. It feels like plus 1 on hit, minus 1 on block. Its only use is as a situational anti-air and in super cancels. Dan's super is really bad for its own reasons, but I'll get into that. Close Light Kick is barely plus on hit anymore. And you can chain out of it. This sucks. Being able to go from light to medium is really nice in Street Fighter 4, because light combos are notoriously awkward. The only link I could find was close medium punch into one light normal. This is really rough. It feels like a one frame link. It's also nowhere near as good of a pressure tool, because it's zero on block instead of plus two. Dan kicks are an amazing tool. But having one amazing tool is just not enough to keep the pressure going. On top of his pressure being so much worse in vanilla, it's further hurt by his terrible combo game. Why would you be scared of Dan's pressure if his only confirmed combo on the ground requires a one frame unplinkable link and one bar to not even do 200 damage? To do significant damage, Dan needs a jump in, four bars plus ultra to do the Psycho Crusher, or to just play like an idiot. That won't even work half the time. On the topic of Dan Kicks, while it is true that Medium, Heavy, and EX Dan Kicks are all safe on block, you're still minus, and it's hard to make a good situation being a bottom 2 character, minus 2 in the face of an opponent who's probably better than you. On top of that, if you use DX Dan Kicks, you're also down a bar. Speaking of bar, let's talk about that super. Yeah. Not great. Dan's super has absolutely zero forward movement. If you want to combo into it, you basically have to go from normal to super. You can combo into it in the corner after light Dan kicks to get one of the shittiest juggles I've ever seen. Safe to say, don't do that. You also lose a lot of hits when you cancel into it after Kuri Yukon, but at least it doesn't leave you minus on hit. What's kind of funny though is that Dan's super still has all these problems in Ultra. Supers are typically not very good in Street Fighter 4. Honestly, there's something I might potentially make a video on. Also, while it's not relevant to Vanilla Dan because the mechanic didn't exist yet, Dan isn't a particularly great user of Red Focus. It mainly serves to give him an alternate way to combo into Ultra 1 in the corner. So yeah, that's Dan in Vanilla Street Fighter 4. Let me know if I miss some stuff. I'm not as familiar with 4 as I am 3rd Strike in Street Fighter 5, but I still enjoy talking about it a lot, and I love talking about Dan. I love this character. By the way, you might have noticed that earlier in the video, I called Dan Bottom 2, not Bottom 1, and that's because Vega was arguably even worse. Baphael has a really good video on Vanilla Vega, so please check it out if you haven't, I'll link it in the description.